What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today is part one of how to make liqueurs at home, the official series. I've already shared several different videos on how to make liqueurs at home and I still stand by them. I love them, they're great. But the last time I shared one, I made a promise that I would soon share my homemade chartreuse recipe. And almost a year later, if not a little more, this video is still not up yet, but there's a good reason for that. The recipe for my homemade chartreuse dates back from about 10 years now. And it's highly inspired by a book Sephora gave me a long time ago. So when I sat down to prepare the video on the homemade chartreuse with my little recipe I was really happy with, I started to make some more researches because I wanted to be sure that the recipe I would share with you would be the best you could possibly make. And then I fell really deep in the liquor rabbit hole. And this is the reason why it took so long to get to this point today. Now, I'm sorry, I'm probably giving you the feeling that what we're gonna do today is a chartreuse but it's not. It's part of the process to get there. What I've discovered when I made my researches is that there are several different categories and methods to make liquors and chartreuse is probably the most complicated of them all because it involves different techniques and different methods. So you need to understand the basics, you need to understand all the methods in order to get to making some chartreuse. So what we're going to do today, the method I'm going to share with you is actually very interesting and it's also the easiest and fastest way to make liqueurs at home. So if you guys are Ready, let's start making liquors at home properly. Let's go. Alright, so I'm gonna try to be as simple as possible. When you make a liqueur, you can impart flavors into a liquid using two different methods maceration or distillation. And whether you're using one or the other, there are different ways to achieve a similar result. For example, with the maceration, you can either just put all the botanicals and flavoring agent into your alcohol and let that steep until you get the result that you want. On the other end, you can also use tinctures or extract or a mix of both and go little by little with each different flavors that are extracted individually until you get the balance of flavors that you are looking for. Using the method with the tinctures and the extracts is actually more accurate. It's kind of easier to get to a desired point because you can go just little by little instead of just throwing everything in one pot and wishing for the best. But that also means that you're going to need all your different flavors extracted separately. So you need to be really dedicated to that craft because you're always going to have some leftovers. So there's some good sides and some downsides to each method. Now for the distillation method, most of the big companies are distilling their own essence. That gives them more control on the end result and also a signature on the flavor profile of the liquor. But most of us at home don't have access to an alembic, so we can't do that. But what we can do to make our own essence is to make some essential oils with high proof spirit. And that's the method that we're gonna use today. Then in a couple of weeks, we're gonna make another liquor with the maceration method. And when it's gonna be the time for the chartreuse episode, we're gonna mix a little bit of both techniques. Also, if you're mostly here for the chartreuse recipes, make sure to stay till the end because I'm gonna reveal today what's the secret ingredient in the yellow one. Now, for today's liquor, I wanna make one for a riff on the Corpse Reviver number two, using this liquor instead of the Cointreau and the Absinthe. So I need both the orange flavors and also some anise notes. So what we're gonna use is some sweet orange essential oils and some Thai basil essential oils. And because oils are not soluble in water, we're gonna need a high proof alcohol to be able to dissolve those oils. What I'm going to use today is an overproof Jamaican rum at 63%. Now, if you have Everclear or any other high proof spirit, you can totally use that instead. Because the essential oils are so intense, you can hardly taste the spirit you're going to use to mix the oils in. So just use whatever high proof spirit you can get. So to make our light essence we're going to use to flavor our liquor, we're going to start with 15 drops of orange oils, 5 drops of Thai basil oils and 62 mils of high proof spirit. 
Now you're gonna close the lid of your container and give it a brief shake to make sure everything is well incorporated or dissolved, should I say. Now you see, because we used a 63% alcohol, we still get a little bit of haziness or cloudiness in the liquid. If we would use something at 80% of alcohol, we would get something crystal clear. On the other hand, if you use a 40% alcohol like vodka, just because you can't get high proof spirit, you can totally do that instead, but just keep in mind, you're gonna get something that's cloudier and in the end result, you're gonna get a liquor that's a little bit hazy, but everything is gonna still be pretty well dissolved. Sometimes, maybe after a little while, you're gonna feel like you need to shake your liquor to make sure all the flavors are well mixed in, but still, that shouldn't stop you from making the recipe at home if that's the only thing you can get. Now, quick disclaimer, this light essence will be good for three batches of the quantity of liquor that we're gonna make today. I didn't wanna scale it down or divide it by three simply because it's really hard to divide five drops by three and that's the ratio I need for my flavor today. But obviously, if you make a liquor at home with only one kind of oil, you can totally scale this down if you don't wanna make three times the liquor. Also, second disclaimer, every time you use essential oils, make sure to use some that are food grade. Oh, hey, what's up guys? Future me here, sorry for the interruption. I just thought it would be important to make some kind of a clarification on the disclaimer I just gave you. First of all, I talked about food grade or food safe essential oils. That's not completely accurate. You need to look for oils that are certified grass, which means generally recognized as safe. So forget about the food grade or food safe thing and now think about grass oils. That's what you want to look for. Also, there's something I didn't talk about, which is very important. There's a maximum amount of essential oils you can ingest before it starts becoming dangerous. So while I knew about this, I didn't talk about it because I know my recipe is way below that level, but it's very important. And I just discovered legit the day after I shot my video that there's a video on YouTube that explains all you need to know to spot that level of essential oils you can ingest. I'm going to link that in the description below. And it comes from a very interesting channel called Art of Drinks, hosted by Darcy O'Neill. This guy is a genius, and uh, since I discovered this channel, I started to chat with him about a special project I've been having for a little while. I was blocked, and he happens to be able to help me, so I have good faith that this special project will happen very soon, so stay tuned for that. So once again, the video for the essential oil is going to be in the description below, but now let's go back to our liquor recipe. Let's go. That being said, we can move on with the recipe. So we're gonna mix this with vodka. So in a glass container, you're gonna add 330 mils of vodka with 21 mils of your light essence. Next, we need to sweeten this with 105 mils of syrup containing 87 grams of sugar. So what you're gonna do is in a graduated vessel or a beaker, you're gonna weight 87 grams of sugar and you're gonna pour water over it until you get to 105 mils. I'm using a 50 mils beaker here because I'm really clumsy and I broke most of my beakers, so I'm gonna have to do it twice. I don't recommend that, obviously. If you have a larger one, use that instead. Then you're gonna stir until dissolve. I usually use microwave for 20 seconds. That really helps and speed up the process. And then once everything is clear and dissolved, you simply gotta pour that over your flavored vodka. Now, all you have to do left is to make sure everything is well mixed and you're gonna see it's gonna look a little bit cloudy or hazy at first, but if you leave it resting on the countertop for a little while, it's gonna clear up really nicely. Then you're gonna bottle it up, and this is how we make liquors with essential oils. Now, obviously, every liquors have different ABVs and sugar content. The one I made today is specifically for my cocktail, but if you wanna play with this at home, and if you're not really comfortable with the calculations, if you wanna know more about this, feel free to join our Patreon. In the next ebook I'm gonna share with my patrons next month, I'm gonna write everything there is to know, so link's gonna be in the description below. So I think we're ready to make the cocktail. What we're gonna need is gin, our liqueur, Lille Blanc, and lemon-flavored citric solution. To make the solution, we're gonna start the way we make a super juice. So we're gonna peel one lemon, we're gonna weight the peel, and we're gonna add the same amount of citric acid. We're gonna leave that resting at room temperature for about one hour, you can cover it if you want, and then we're gonna add water to reach a 5% acid solution. In this case, with the 12.5 grams of citric acid I had, I'm gonna need 235 grams of water. 
I'm gonna stir until everything's dissolved, filter out the peels, bottle it up, and this is how we make the lemon flavored citric solution. Now for the garnish, we're gonna need one orange for the peel and basil oil. If you wanna know how to make the basil oil, it's the exact same way as I made the mint oil in a previous video, in my daiquiri video. I'm gonna link it up here, but basically it's just like blending some blanched herb with oil, strain it out and use a pipette to make some drops over the cocktail. It's super easy, it's fragrant, it's tasty, and it looks awesome. So now let's make the cocktail. First in a mixing glass, we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 mils of gin, same amount of our liquor, same thing of Lille Blanc, and again, three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 mils of our lemon acid solution. We're gonna fill our mixing glass with ice and stir it for about 60 revolutions. We can now strain this in a cocktail coupe. We're gonna express our orange zest over the cocktail, discard the zest, and then using a pipette, we're gonna make some drops of oil over the cocktail. I like to make one larger and then some smaller next to it and keep it uneven. And there you have it, my friends. This is how I make my Corpse Survivor number two with the homemade orange and Thai basil liqueur. Cheers. Mm. It's crazy how close we are from the real Corpse Reviver, but the anise flavors are incorporated differently. By using Thai basil oils, we get a lot of anise flavors, but we don't get the fresh basil. So by adding a few drops of basil oil over the cocktail, we get a beautiful garnish, and then we get the two dimension from the basil that works real well in this cocktail. So I really love it. I hope you're gonna love it too. But before I go, I made you a promise. I wanna reveal what's the secret ingredient of of the yellow chartreuse so you can buy some before we make the video in a couple of weeks so the answer is ombre seeds so that's it you heard it here first my friends this is it for me today thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe before you go to turn that bell if you want to make sure not to miss the next one until then thank you very much again have a great day and see you very soon cheers to the homemade liqueurs bye bye mm. Good drink.